Alright, since the new trend in YouTube is to make things float, so I just have to do that as well. And what we are going to talk about this video is actually overclocking uh, uh, RAM for Ryzen. I did my Ben Solo 3 build, uh, you can check the videos, actually I have a playlist of my build, 3 episodes about it. And I did that with uh, an Asus uh, Strix X370F and a Ryzen 5. I bought as well as RAM the uh, Venegans RGB modules as you also saw in the intro and the specific model is the uh, CMR16G X4M2C3000C15. So the RAM is 3000 megahertz so I figure well if I set it up at 3000 megahertz when I do in my build I'm not even overclocking it right because the RAM is 3000 megahertz. Well, turns out that the system was highly unstable with the RAM at 3000 MHz and they had no way to make it work at 3000 MHz. So what is RAM overclocking really? Now, you may think, as I did, that if you set your RAM at the clock speed uh, at which is advertised to work for, you're not really overclocking it, right? Similar to uh, a CPU, if the CPU is for 3.2 GHz and you don't overclock it, then you should be able to run at 3.2 GHz. Well, with uh, RAM, uh, the situation is a little bit different. Now, uh, for the DDR4, that is the JEDEX standard, uh, you can read about it uh, on Wikipedia, and there you see that uh, there are actually uh, a certain amount of speeds that are actually advertised are part of the standards. The four speeds are uh, 1600, 1866, 2133, which is the most common, uh, that should be kind of like the base clock for the DDR4 RAM. And then you have 2400, which will be already considered overclocking, um, 2666, 2993 and 3200. Now, you will notice that 3000 is actually not there. And before flashing the BIOS to the latest version uh, for the ASUS motherboard, uh, that was the case as well. I did not have 3000 as an option. Now, again, if you're looking closely um, at the uh, JEDEX standards, there's no 3000, but the actual motherboard is advertising to support up to 3200 megahertz. So if we head over to the uh, ASUS website and check the memory uh, compatibility which will be something that I should have done before buying the RAM. Uh, we see that actually the board support up to 3200, but there are only certain speeds advertised as being fully compatible with the board, and 3000 is not one of that. And that's come not to, to a surprise because it's not even part of the JETEX standard. If we look actually at the Corsair website for this particular RAM, it's actually advertised on the website itself as being compatible uh, with Intel chipset and on the box itself as well is advertising the Intel chipset but there's no word about AMD Ryzen. So for a moment I thought well maybe this RAM is not going to work at all uh, with my configuration and that's why it's so unstable. Uh, but then looking at the Corsair blog, uh, they were really actually talking about the Corsair link for the RGB setting of the RAM, uh, which we are going to cover later on in the video as well. Uh, we see there that they're actually advertising Corsair Link to now be uh, available for Ryzen and the actual specific model of RAM that I have is actually listed there. You also have to consider about RAM overclocking uh, that Ryzen officially is supporting up to 2666 MHz. However, uh, everywhere uh, you can find people overclocking the RAM well behind that. So although that's what uh, MD said that they are officially supporting, since that should not be a problem to go over to 2666. So why my RAM was unstable at 3000 MHz? Well, that has to do with timings. Looking back at the uh, Wikipedia page about the JETEX standard, uh, you notice that the advertised uh, timings uh, for 2993 MHz are 22-22-22 for a cast latency of 15, which uh, happened to be the cast latency uh, of this RAM. So I figure where 3000 is 
close enough to 2993 and I went into the BIOS to set it up. So let's see uh, how in the BIOS for the ASUS X370F uh, you're going to overclock the RAM. This will be mostly similar as well for other motherboard manufacturer uh, aside the BIOS may be looking a little bit different. So the first things you notice uh, when we get into the BIOS and you go into the AI tuning uh, there is an overclocking profile uh, and there you may find DOCP profiles. The DOCP profile will be for us the equivalent of the XMP profile. Do not use profiles, uh, they are not going to work. Uh, I test that, they are not going to work. So the best is just to manually change the speed of the RAM to 3000 MHz and then in the DRAM timings you're going to be able to change the timings to 22, 22 and 22 on the first three spots. And then you can also double check the volume voltages uh, on auto voltage is already bumping it up uh, 1.35 volts and uh, exit the um, BIOS and yeah is boot into Windows everything is good to go now that we boot it up into Windows uh, we can also play around a little bit with RGB settings now the Corsair Venegans is fully compatible with the motherboard from an RGB point of view and if we check into uh, the Aura software we can turn the uh, lights on and everything is turning on including the RAM and you can see that as well in Aura uh, you can control individually uh, the RAM modules for example if I select a solid color I can give a different solid color to the RAM modules however uh, it's pretty limited what you can do in Aura Aura really tried to sync everything up but actually I would like to have uh, a color cycling for the um, for the RGB LED strip and as well for the uh, motherboard lights but uh, I didn't want to have the color cycle on the RAM because it was looking a little bit awful but actually you can just unlink uh, the RAM from Aura so they are not going to be taken into consideration and you can actually use together with Aura the Corsair Link software to give different uh, style uh, RGB lights to the actual RAM and they're going to work without any problem together with each other. But now RGB is not the uh, main uh, issue here. We were able to have a successful boot at 2000 MHz with 22, 22, 22 as a latency. Now you need to ensure to test stability that you run something as uh, Prime95 and you use the default uh, test that is the one already selected which is going to actually uh, stress test uh, the RAM. Um, so just let it go, uh, run for a while, you can also uh, minimize it and keep working on your computer if you need obviously to do you no know, gaming or anything that is CPU intensive but you know if you just want to browse the internet and stuff like that you can still doing it while Prime95 is chugging away and then just be sure that when you're done with your test uh, you can uh, stop it from the uh, taskbar. You will likely going to uh, have this test going for you know a good amount of hours, even uh, eventually uh, through one night, to fully ensure that the system is stable. Because the system may appear to be stable, but then we start to suddenly crash or misbehave uh, when you are doing gaming or other um, CPU and RAM intensive uh, tasks. Now you can see that the RAM is uh, fully working now at 2000 megahertz. Uh, we can see this as well uh, in uh, CPU Z uh, by going into the memory tab. Uh, if you go into SDP, uh, sorry SPD, you can actually see by selecting uh, the slot in which the RAM is installed uh, the actual JDEC profiles that are uh, for the RAM. And as you can see, the profiles are using a latency that is much lower than 22, and with all those latencies, is not going to work. At least in my case, right? So it's probably going to be a try and error. But if you have the same uh, type type of uh, RAM on an X370 motherboard, uh, you may want to try to use 2222 as a latency at 3000 MHz. Maybe I will be even able to bring it up to more than 3000 MHz, but for now I'm happy enough that it's stable running at 3000. Performance wise uh, is behaving very well and I have no problem for example playing uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider, I run some benchmark and is actually uh, stable over the uh, 80 frames per second, maybe dipping to 70 in a certain uh, part of the game, but you know very well playable at 1080p, uh, very high settings and it's just working flawlessly. And even games such as Arma 3 uh, are working well with the Ryzen 5 and the overclocked RAM. Uh, full stable I get good frame rates uh, with a minimum dips in the 40s 
uh, but you know Arma is known not to be like fully optimized game uh, and obviously when you play multiplayer the frown rate will be dependent on the uh, server itself but you know I play Arma um, in the last weeks in uh, online uh, sessions multiplayer sessions and campaigns and I play for hours and the system was rock solid so Prime 95 play some games and be sure that the system is fully stable I hope that this video was helpful and I hope that by setting the latencies to 22 for this particular RAM which looks gorgeous but I was mad it was so unstable but since that I found the right settings so far I hope you enjoyed this video uh, I enjoy uh, doing it I try to improve as much as I can the quality of the channel and try to have uh, good and catchy intros and working with the lights and make everything nice for you guys as you know YouTube uh, changed the uh, monetization so my videos at the moment are not monetized there are no advertisement running on them because they're not worth uh, given I have less than a thousand subscribers and I'm just barely over 100 so if you can please support the channel by subscribing on it that will be of great help and I hope you enjoy this content I hope you learn something out of it and see you on the next one